name is Arno. I'm the education coordinator here at the BGCL, and I'm with my guest, Christian. Christian, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Christian. Um, I am a ruminant nutrition research technician with the Government of Canada. I work uh, here just outside of Lethbridge at the uh, Lethbridge Research Station. Okay, so you said a bunch of complicated words there. Uh, what does that mean? What do you do for a living? Um, so basically, I work for my scientist, who is the person who spearheads all of uh, our research. And I'm the one who works inside the lab and actually does the, the grunt work of what the lab is. So doing kind of just basic laboratory work, as well as running the experiment when we actually have it going on, as well as I work a little bit with students and teach them kind of what I do as well and a more hands-on experience. Cool. Why did you originally get into this? Uh, well, I first started my career in research after graduating um, from the University of Lethbridge. I was able to get a small position with that university. I started off doing an independent study with uh, a professor for university credits. And then once I graduated, that independent study still had a lot of interesting questions we wanted to have answered. So we were able to turn that into a actual job. Uh, so I worked for the university for a couple of years uh, doing that. But the downside with working in the research field is it's very funding dependent. Uh, so I had worked for a little while with them, but our money was very quickly starting to run out. Uh, so I started looking for other positions and I knew that the there was a position that had popped up at the research station. Uh, it was more of a, they have casual positions where it's more of a four month term where you're there for more or less a specific task that you're being hired to do. Um, so when I was hired, it was, there was a trial that was going on and there was, it was a very large trial. Um, our lab works with beef cattle. Uh, so we had a metabolism trial with beef, which is very intensive and requires a lot of people. So I was hired on as kind of the, the grunt working on the, the smaller but necessary tedious jobs that were required. Um, so yeah, once and I, when my career or when my four month term was starting to run out, the person who I was working underneath, she was uh, my supervisor was very close to her retirement. Uh, and I was aware of that. So I had worked very closely with her and she had trained me up on a great deal of what her tasks were. So when she was, when she actually ended up retiring, I applied for her position. And because I was able to work with her directly and see exactly what the job entails, um, I was able to get her position. So it was kind of a, a long continuous learning process of things. Totally. Um, and what does the day to day look like for you? Um, what my favorite thing is the variability that is with this degree, it really changes week to week, even like month to month kind of thing. It's if we have an active trial that's going on right now, that's the busiest time for any technician. Uh, so that's when the, you're actually going out and you're collecting samples, you're working with the animals or you're working with the crop. It really depends on what kind of research lab you're in. Um, the agriculture, like there's, it's an agricultural research center here in Lethbridge. So everything that's done there is agriculture based, but it could be crops, it could be animals. It's, there's quite a, a large range of research that's done there. Uh, so when there is a trial, you're really, really busy. It could be a normal day. It could be a 15 hour day. It really depends on what, if you're sampling a lot. Um, but then when you don't have a trial, it's more of just a simple, uh, like, you're doing an eight hour day, you're showing up to the lab and you've got a very large list of things you need to do, uh, a lot of lab analysis, and that you're just slowly piecing away the work each day, uh, but it's not as much overtime. So there's really busy times and then there's more just consistent, I don't wanna say casual, but it feels more casual when, you, when you've got those crazy busy days, you kind of appreciate the, the normal days where you're, you know what time you're gonna be off and it's just, you're gonna get this done and you go home. Absolutely. 
Um, and you talked a little bit about this, but what type of training or schooling do you need in order to get a job in this field? Um, so for, in order to be a technician, you can be, you, you can do a bachelor of science. Um, and what specific bachelor of science, like a biology, a biochemistry, environmental science, it, it really depends on what kind of lab you'd like to work in. Um, it's, it's, there's lots of different types. Um, it's biochemistry seems from, in my opinion, seems to be the most universal I've seen from working in labs, mostly because there is, it's having a biochemistry degree lends itself well to a large amount of fields. Um, but, uh, like for myself, I have a universe or, um, a environmental science degree, uh, but I'm working in an animal science, uh, lab. So that was a bit of a big learning difference. Um, it was, it, a lot of my, uh, I learned a lot on the job because of it. Uh, previously I was working in a insect lab, which is very different than working with cattle. So it was a big shift for me. But uh, it's from what from my experience, I found that people are generally pretty good at helping you learn what to do on the site. It's a very like give and take kind of thing. It's everybody needs help at some point at the station. And it's uh, it's something I've, I've really learned to appreciate that it's really everyone's kind of helps out each other to a degree and everyone's really willing to take somebody on if you're like, hey, I see you're doing this experiment. I'm not familiar with this, but I have it coming up. Do you mind if I shadow you, shadow you while you do this? Or do you mind if you give me a couple tips on things you've noticed that work well for this? So there's a lot of interchange of information, which I find helps lots of labs perform better and just makes everything run a lot smoother. Awesome. So from what I'm hearing, uh, you can get into this sort of field with a degree in science. Um, and then depending on the type of science degree you have, you might have to do some learning on the job as well. Exactly. But there's also other positions within the research station that don't necessarily require a bachelor of science. Um, they also have IT positions. Um, so computer science degrees, there's HR, uh, but there's also trades jobs as well, like electrician, uh, and there's also general laborers. So those, that's a group of individuals who keep just the whole station running, basically. Um, and as well as barn staff in a similar degree, but they keep the animals alive. They feed, their, feed the animals. Um, and positions that are general labor and barn staff, uh, those you can get with just a high school degree. Um, they're not, you don't necessarily need a university degree for those ones. Cool. So if you had a passion for working with animals and maybe wanted mm -hmm. um, a government job, uh, that would be a, a way that you could do that. Exactly. Especially if you have a bit of experience working with, like if you come from a farm background and you have experience working with uh, farm equipment or um, animal husbandry or like working with animals, uh, you've experienced with that, it helps. It's not always uh, necessary, um, but it does definitely help. Awesome. Um, so how does someone get a job in the field? You already talked about how you got a job in the field. Um, is, are there any sort of best practices for getting a job in the field? In my opinion, I think the best way and to get a job in the field and also to see if a job in this field is something that interests you is through co-op uh, programs with universities. It's something that I wish I knew more about when I was in school and wish I had done because getting a position with the government and just kind of showing up as a, as someone who hasn't worked there before, it's, it was more difficult than it compared to somebody who's done a co-op uh, and has already worked at the research station. And like more specifically, if uh, for people who aren't familiar with co-op uh, programs, it's when you take either a semester or two semesters uh, in a row off from schooling, and you go and you work in a field in the field that you have your degree in. So the university helps find a position for you within that field. Um, and you go and you work uh, for it's either yeah, four or eight months. And then you're doing you do small reporting like this is what I've learned on the job. Um, and at the end, you do a presentation as well. It changes a little bit depending on what university you go to. 
I know at the U of L, they offer a co-op designation. So if you do three separate co-ops, you're able to get that on your degree saying that you've, it's just saying I've done and I've completed multiple uh, co-ops and it's just kind of a, a feather in your hat that you can display when you're applying for positions and it can be very valuable and kind of help you stand out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, co-ops are great because it's just a, a short little work amount that you go and you can see, hey, this is this a career that interests me? Uh, or, oh no, I absolutely despise doing this job. I'm glad I only am doing it for four months instead of I'm working my whole career towards this and now I'm stuck. Or not stuck, but it's harder to turn around. Absolutely. Um, what are some of the challenges that you've faced in this career? Um, I would say one challenge that sometimes deters people from a technician position is some of the work can be quite long and tedious. Uh, there, there are moments where there are a couple weeks at a time where you're just sitting in front of a machine and it's just grinding sample in there and you're just doing that eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. And it can, it can be hard for some people uh, to get through that. Um, I personally don't mind it because it's more, it's a temporary pain, but you know, this isn't your career and you know, every day for the next five years, this is what you're going to do. It's more of a, you kind of buckle down and get through it. Uh, and things will get better after it's, you're not stuck in this horrible task that you have to do. It's all temporary. So, but, but sometimes it can be too much and that's fair. It's just, it takes certain types of people to grind through that. And then if it's not for you, then you'll find out real quick. <laughs> totally. Uh, do you have any advice or tips for youth who are interested in this? Uh, I know we talked about how to get a job, but for youth who are interested in pursuing this career, is there anything that you could kind of leave them with? Um, on, honestly, I just, it's kind of going back to the point of co-ops. I, I really, think that a co-op is the best way to see what you want to do uh, without fully jumping in because your opportunities as a student are a lot easier and a lot more abundant compared to once you're outside of school. Uh, mostly because of just how funding works for most places, it's much easier to hire students um, than it is to hire somebody who has a degree and you're bringing them in because it's harder to justify a short term. Uh, so I would say take as many opportunities as you can as a student because they dry up quick. Awesome. Uh, and I'll just kind of ask one final question here. Um, do you, and it's a bit of an aside question. Do you have any examples of cool work or cool research that has been done at the research station in Lethbridge? Um, well, I, I guess I can, I can speak best to the research that our lab does, um, but our, us specifically, we look at greenhouse gas reduction uh, without reducing the ability, or without reducing the daily amount that the animal is gaining. So we, are look, we work mostly with feedlot animals and we're looking at ways to supplement their feed with alternative things. Uh, right now we're looking at supplementing small amounts of seaweed into their diet. So we feed uh, cattle very, very small, one, two percent amount of seaweed mixed in with their regular feed. And we're seeing really interesting reductions in methane emissions from these animals. Um, so it's, it's, I don't know, I, I find it quite interesting, uh, that especially because of the great abundance that we have of their, the ability to grow seaweed uh, is so abundant for many countries because of their coastlines and stuff. And it, it reduces the impact on native grasslands around here, which are already so strapped and just every little bit of land is taken with it. It helps reduce that impact as well. So it's trying, yeah, I'd say, yeah, that's something that I find interesting with our research. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and for any youth interested, uh, it's worth just looking at the research station on their website or whatever, doing a little bit of research into it, because the few things that I know about the research station, they're always doing interesting research there. And if you are interested in a career in science, it's definitely an avenue that you could pursue. 
Uh, thank you so much for your time, Christian. I really appreciate this. Um, if any youth have any questions for Christian, feel free to submit those on our website and we'll forward them to him. Or if we have an overwhelming amount of questions, then we may schedule a, a separate Zoom uh, session so long as that works with Christian. Sounds good to me. Awesome. Uh, just a reminder, we will be posting videos throughout the week, so stay tuned. Uh, thank you very much, Christian. You have a great day. You as well.